This video might be a bit dry, but it's an important one because there's not a lot of good information out there on this topic. Today we're going to discuss the digital mode FSQ, which stands for Fast Simple QSO. There's a few things about this mode that set it apart from others, and that's why I went with it for my family's digital communication system. First, the software is capable of sending back an automatic acknowledgement anytime a transmission is received, and that's important to me for the same reason that we nod our heads and we say, mm-hmm, whenever we're talking to a person. It's very difficult to have meaningful communication with a person if you have no indication that they can hear or understand you. The second thing FSQ does for us is it's able to route transmissions off of intermediary stations to a destination that you might not be able to reach directly. And it does all this without the complicated and expensive setup of building a hardware repeater system. FSQ lastly does not require the complex time sync issues between two stations that maybe JSA call does. Now, JSA call is a great program and I use it all the time, but for my family's digital communication system, I considered that time sync issue just problematic enough that I couldn't go that direction. FSQ is not perfect by any means, but it checks off way more boxes than it leaves unchecked for me. Let's head back inside and we can dip our toes into the shallow end of FSQ. Fast Simple QSO was developed in 2014 by Khan Vasilev and Murray Greenman. It's characterized by its keyboard to keyboard directed chat mode, which closely approximates the text messaging experience. With FSQ, we can transmit small files and photos. We can even retrieve small files from another system, which lends itself to a variety of telemetry applications. The original software for FSQ was called FSQ Call, and you can still download it from their website here. This is a screenshot of what it looks like, and it works just fine on Windows. It was never designed for Linux. Thankfully, it was later adapted into the FL Digi software suite, which allows us to use this on Linux. With FSQ, Stations need not be set to the exact same speed, only to the same mode. This sets it apart from other digital modes, which often require that the sending and receiving station be set to the exact same speed. There is no forward error correction with FSQ. You simply have to rely on the robust nature of the mode for decodes, and it will typically decode down to about negative 14 decibels below the noise floor. If there's an error in the call sign portion of the message, it just won't show up on the screen, you won't get an acknowledgement, and you just resend the message. If there's an error in the body of the message, it may just simply appear as a typo and you can usually figure out what the other person is saying anyway. Either way, this is typically remedied by slowing down the transmit speed and you can even slow down the transmit speed of the other station remotely and I'll show you how to do that. Every transmission in FSQ is ID'd. That is, your call sign is transmitted as part of the preamble so you don't have to worry about typing in your call sign once every 10 minutes to stay legal. Additionally, Every transmission will contain the call sign of who you are directing the message to, followed by a short one-letter command called a trigger character, which tells the directed station what they should do with the message. So we scroll down here to the list of trigger characters, and we have, for example, the repeat command. So if I type in your call sign, followed by the exclamation point, it will order your computer to repeat whatever it is that follows that. If I type in your call sign followed by the dollar sign, your computer will return back a list of every station that it's heard recently. If I type the ampersand, it's going to report whatever your QTC message is, and I'll show you where to input that here in a moment. Let's go down the list of these trigger characters, and I'll show you what they look like going out and what they look like coming in. We'll just hit the really basic ones to get you up and running, and then we can do the more advanced ones in a later video. Let's do a real quick overview of this FSQ window. Now, all of my colors have already been changed on my system, so it's going to look a little bit different on your system, but everything's going to be in generally the same spot. So down here, I have my transmission window, and so when I type in here and then press Enter, it'll send, and then everything I send and receive will display up here in this top window. Then here we have the waterfall, which is fairly universal to all digital modes, and on the right, we have a herd list, so all stations that I've heard for the last little while will appear here. Down here I've got some commands. I can turn the directed mode of FSQ on and off. However, turning it off really diminishes a lot of the utility of this software. So I'm gonna leave it on and active. I've got a monitor that will show me everything that's come through, even if it's not directed to me. You can see there's a little bit of garbage coming through every now and then I get some interference that goes above the squelch level that I have set here to about one fifth or so above the bottom of this slider. It seems to do well there. I've also got some fields for the QTH and QTC, which when I click that, it'll transmit it, or we can even retrieve that information from another station with the trigger commands that I'll show you here in just a moment. 
To get into the configuration for FSQ, I'm going to go to Configure, Config Dialog, and then once I'm there, I go to the modem, FSQ, and it brings up this configuration window. I'm going to be upfront with you. There's a few fields here that I have no idea what they do, and I can't find anyone else who can teach me about that. It's not in the documentation anywhere. I don't exactly know how to adjust the min hits, move average, or image LPF. If you know, please comment and let us know. But so far, I don't know this. Again, nobody else seems to know it either. Herd aging, however, refers to how long I want these stations in my herd list to last. And right now I have it set to never. Everything there is going to be in that list until I decide to remove it. And I can go ahead and do that now. I'm going to right click and then delete and that is gone. But you could set it to automatically expire those out every 120 minutes down to one minute. I'm going to leave it at never. You can change your speed here in TX parameters. I don't find that to be the most convenient place to change my speed though. I can change speed down here by left clicking on that. If things are really hairy, I can slow it down to about 1.5 or 2 baud, but I think 4.5 is typically a really good range. I can also change the speed by going here to op mode, FSQ, and then select one of these, but we've got multiple ways to skin a cat here. The sounder is simply your system transmitting out your call sign every so often, or you could even turn that off. Most of my systems, I leave that off, but here at home, I have it send out my call sign about once an hour. The timeout field is a really neat feature because FSQ will not cause harmful interference if somebody else is using that frequency. So if there's a little interference here, maybe I got my squelch slid way down because I'm trying to hear a weak signal or somebody else is talking on it, my sounder will not talk over that. Or if I type something in and I want to transmit it and somebody else is using the frequency, it's not going to interfere with them. So it'll wait 20 seconds before it sends out a message on my screen that says, timed out. You can't talk. This comes defaulted at much lower, but I max it out at 20. Now the center frequency, even though we've got some selections here that we could apparently change this, it doesn't let us change it. I think that's a glitch in the program. Nobody I talk to can tell me how to change that center frequency. If you know, again, please comment. Now here's the QTC field. We can type pretty much anything we want into that, for example, and we can transmit that out by pressing the QTC field, or somebody can request that from our station. That's a nice little place to leave messages for people if you want to have that capability. With logging, I leave this off. I don't need logs, and in fact, it is a weakness if somebody requests that log file and it's a big file. I just saw this happen. The guy did it by accident, and it was a total honest mistake, but it started trying to transmit about four years worth of logs out onto the airwaves, and it was in the middle of the night, and you had to call him up and, and, and tell him to run out to his radio and shut it off. It was, I'm sure, very humbling and embarrassing, <laughs> but this is a weakness. I turn logs off. I can also turn them off down here. Now, the timeout here, notify timeout, this field is a little bit different. I leave it at zero because this has something to do with the pipe score trigger character. And I'll show you that in just a minute. There's a little window that will pop up. It's an alert window saying, hey, you've got a message. And if you leave it at zero, that window will stay up there until you click OK. You could bring this all the way up to, I think, 30, and it will just go away after a while. But zero seems to work just fine for me. Now, always remember when you make settings changes to click Save. Stop the presses. I almost forgot to tell you two very important things about FSQ. First, FSQ works better, faster, and more efficiently with lowercase letters. You can use capital letters in your communication, but it's going to be slower and more error prone. Second, FSQ call signs are case sensitive, and you'll notice back there in that configuration menu, there is a little box that says my call lowercase. You should select that. In fact, everyone in your system should have that selected. If you try to reach somebody who's using an uppercase call sign, as is very common with digital modes, but you're directing it to their call sign, but you're typing in lowercase letters, it's not going to reach them. They're not going to be able to reach you. So let's standardize everybody on FSQ with lowercase call signs and using lowercase letters as much as we can in our communication, even if it looks a little bit weird. All right, back to the video. I want to show you also the QTH button. That is not listed here in the FSQ config. That's actually over here in the operator station. So here in the QTH, we can click home. 
QTH means your location, but that's just yet another location on the software that you could type in a message for somebody and they could retrieve that later if, they, if you so desire for that function. Let's click Save and Close. With later versions of FL Digi, you could right click on these buttons down here and it would bring up that config dialog for FSQ where you can adjust all those settings. But as you'll recall, I just simply use the add and remove programs function of Raspberry Pi OS. And so I've got a little bit older version, which still works just fine. It just doesn't have a couple of those features. Now, regardless of which version you're using, it is possible to accidentally move this receive filter off of 1500 on the waterfall. And unfortunately, we can't move our transmit off of 1500 to go try to find it if some other station you were trying to talk to accidentally swiped that off. So check out my notifications video a few videos back and you'll see I figured out a way that you can move another station onto 1500. Unfortunately, RSIDs will not work in FSQ, but you can move to a different mode and then use an RSID to send that station onto that other mode. And then when you bring it back to FSQ, it'll default back to 1500. Okay, I've moved us back to 1500, and we can start by going over our first trigger character, which is simply the space. The space will be inserted right after the call sign of whoever we're directing our message to. And I could manually type in that call sign, or I can just double click it here if it's already on my herd list. I'll put a space and test. And I only have to hit enter to send, which is unique because other digital modes, you would need to press this button up here or something similar. All right, we can see our message going out over the waterfall and it's going to display up here what we're sending and we're not going to get any acknowledgement, but I will move over here to my portable bag and then we will be able to see what it looks like coming back. Okay, and the message is coming through now from the other station and you can see it just displayed. It did not trigger our station to send an acknowledgement. The next trigger character, we're going to use the pound sign. Now here you see it has listed as message or file transfer, and that is correct. This is the command used for a file transfer, but because we're bad people, we're not using this exactly as the developer had intended, but this is going to trigger that other station to send us the acknowledgement. So I usually put a space anyway after the pound sign, it doesn't really matter. It's just for ease of reading, and I click enter to send. In a moment, the other station will receive, it'll display it on the screen, and it's going to send back an automatic acknowledgement. Here I've now sent a message to our system at home from my portable bag. It will include the pound sign, and my system will automatically send back an acknowledgement. Incoming transmission. There we go. And it's going to go out, and it's just going to say ACK. Now, one thing I want to point out, I did tell you it's all directed. We can see here in the monitor window, there's my call sign. And you'll recall it's a shared call sign between me and my wife. And so everything's listed there just to make the FCC happy. And our acknowledgement went out. We're going to be doing a few more tests here. And 4.5 is kind of slow. So I'm going to speed up to 6, which is our max speed. But I want to speed up the other station too. So how do I do that? Well, I can scroll down here, and here's the trigger command for increase sending speed. It's the greater than symbol. So let's get back in here, do that, and I can type the greater than symbol. Now I could end there, or I could type another little message after that. It doesn't really matter. It's all going to print out on the other station. And when the other station receives that, it's going to show us an acknowledgement and it'll tell us what speed it set itself to. So there we go. It's now telling us it's at its max speed. If I wanted to slow it down, I would just use that less than symbol. It's listed here as well. If I wanted to speed it up or slow it down multiple steps, I would just send that command a couple times. Let's request the herd list from my portable bag using the dollar sign, and that's going to tell me everything it's got on its herd list currently. Now, if it's set to never, that might be quite a list. If it's set to expire after a couple hours, I know that it's a very fresh list. This would be useful in figuring out who I could relay off of this portable bag and reach. So I'll double click there and I'll type the dollar sign and it could contain information after that. It'll still display, but I'm going to press enter and I'll need to pause the video because it's going to be a bit long of a transmission, but we will get the list of every station that the portable bag currently can hear. 
I've opened up the monitor here so you can see it's typing it out. And this is a helpful tool if maybe conditions are weak enough. And there we go. The transmission is complete. I can close that monitor window and it's displayed on my received screen here. I told you we've got two places that we could type in messages, this QTC and the QTH. The QTC can be requested with the ampersand and the QTH, the at. That makes sense. QTH means your location and so where you at. So let's go ahead and we'll do the QTC with the ampersand. You only notice I right clicked on this and it brought that up. I don't have to necessarily type in the call sign or double click and then manually enter that. I could just right click and then select this. So let's do that. If I want to find out what version and what software the other station is using, I can right click here and we use that caret command and it will send out that request and return back to me what software they're using. It's not a huge application for this, but you know, it's something to do. Sometimes I'm curious. Let's wrap this video up by talking about relays. Our primary relay command is going to be the semicolon. It's not our only one that we can use, but let's start with that. Now, I'm going to type in my portable bag, the semicolon, and let's say I want to reach my Yukon. Now, I went ahead and I've put macros up here for all of the stations that I routinely access. You can do that too. And in fact, I've got the local time and I've got the pound sign all ready to go. Because I'm using the pound sign, it's going to relay back an acknowledgement through that whole chain back to me so that I know the transmission was received. And we're receiving the message back now. You might have also noticed up here I do have some macros set up all ready to go with, first of all, the command to slide us back to 1500, and then the call sign with the semicolon, and all everything ready to go. And sometimes I'll even put in this little H to let the other station know that I'm transmitting from home, because it's not always apparent with all of this mess of characters down here. There we go. Who actually sent the message? Now let's say I need to relay through more than just one station. I'm going to need to use that exclamation point command because the semicolon really only likes to relay off of one station. And so I'll do this if I'm at work and I want to relay off of my Yukon and then to home and then to my wife and her car way down the way. Now just know that you're not going to get an acknowledgement back with this, even if you use that pound sign. So I've got my car there, and then the Yukon, we'll just do an exclamation point. So I can use the pound sign, and it will trigger that notification that we set up for the audio alert in her car, but it's not going to send that acknowledgement all the way back through three stations. One more little treat for you here. We're going to use this pipe score command from my other computer, and it's going to send that alert window to home. Thank you all so much for sticking with it to the end. In a future video, we'll go over some of the more advanced capabilities of FSQ, such as photo and file transmission and also telemetry retrieval, and how to harden your system against some of the vulnerabilities that FSQ leaves it open to. For now, if you want to learn more, check out fsqcall.org. These guys have a network set up over near the East Coast. If you've got HF capability, you can dial in and chat with them. Also, check out my friend MJ's channel on YouTube, Ham Radio Made Simple. I think if we scroll down here to the best grid down HF digital mode, I believe that's the one that talks about FSQ and where I got some of my first exposure to FSQ.